Thank you for listening to Mailbox Money, your guided tour through safe, sacred, and speculative investing with a plan and a purpose to do more good with newfound peace of mind. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Mailbox Money. I'm Jackson Wood, joined as always by my partner and my friend, Ryan Kruger. This is going to be a fun one. I stole that right from the title of the email Ryan sent me with the notes here. Um, but it truly is going to be a fun one. And the stories, the research, the message that this conveys, I think is very timely. And what we're going to do today is talk about the system that we have built and give you a glimpse into the thought process that goes into investing and building portfolios. And I think it's timely because, especially right now, if you've paid attention to the news, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of people making bold predictions of what they think will happen and what the outcome is from here. And they make these forecasts and, and they're always wrong, it seems like. And instead of focusing on that, in the time of kind of some uncertainty, we're just going to pull the curtain back and look at what we know works, the systems that have been built. And then there's some fun stories sprinkled in. It wouldn't be Mailbox Money podcast if it didn't have a couple good stories in it. Um, but this one's really good and, I, and, I, and I'm really excited for this. Um, but yeah, get, we, get, we get a little bit nerdy in this one and we're going to just pull the curtain back and give you some insight into not what should be happening, but what is and how we look at the markets and how we look at these different opportunities. So, so this is the, I, I like sharing real life stories and nonfiction and examples and math um, as the best way I can ever answer the question. Cause there's a lot, a lot of debates and I think wasted time. Um, most wasted time is what's going on macro predicting everything around the world as some re <laughs> way to invest. The second biggest waste of time is this active versus passive debate and digging in your heels. Um, we're going to share an example of what we know from math and nonfiction is I don't believe active management and, and full disclosure, we are active managers of equity portfolios. Um, I don't think it has anything to do. And I, I'd like to prove it today with what we believe or we like. Um, definitely doesn't have anything to do with what we know or think should be happening, but a complete respect of what is happening. As Jackson said, I don't think that discipline and active management is even a choice at all. I think it's a requirement. When the inputs change, so should the output. Um, and the way we've harnessed and organized that is what we call affectionately a tournament of stocks. And as we kick off March Madness, no better way. As I was on the phone with a basketball coach whose story I'm going to share with you here in a second last night that blew me away and compare that to a little humble store owner um, who just announced a 105% dividend pay raise for its stakeholders, which is kind of an eyebrow raiser for anybody, even a dividend growth active manager whose goal and playbook is to e exceed the market and all of our peers average dividend growth of our roster we're looking for double digit dividend growth and accelerating um so when you sprinkle in a hundred percent on a consumer discretion stock during the middle of a recession and slowdown and in inflation fears most consumers now have never even seen people will naturally ask Man, how did you know what did you tell me about what do you like next or what what do you how'd you pick that one and i think here's the secret to kind of organize all of this i absolutely didn't know and that's what i love about this business the most we're going to share with you how we built a repeatable discipline system where they will raise their hands deep down on the bench get me in coach i i, I want to play but how do you make those candidates compete against each other. So you don't have to know everything and specifically and humbly knowing that you don't know. I mean, when I get out of bed, I don't have an alarm clock. I, I mean, if it seems like I'm excited and love this business, it's legitimate. And it's probably understating how much I scream at my kids on the way out the door. Let us attack this day with a relentless enthusiasm, unknown to man and womankind every day, because I feel lucky to get to go in and find out what I don't know. 
And we've, yes, we've built a tournament selection committee of math and hard data science to present and do a lot of that heavy lifting so that we can sort and then fall down one of these rabbit holes, which we're about to share. We didn't know which one of these was going to have that surprising upside and being just as willing to admit when you're wrong and step away is the key to even finding and making room on your roster. And as I quote this basketball coach that is hoping in a few weeks to come just down the street, hint, hint, to Houston, Texas, where this store owner, and some people think this analogies to the stock market and basketball are a little stretched. It ain't a stretch at all. I mean, you, this guy is going to be the title light big sponsor that you will see if you watch the final four. Um, and we're going to talk about his merchandise and his backstory here in a second that all these teams want a shot at. Um, but the University of Houston's coach said it best about our stock selection process. He was talking about basketball. He said, almost every day in practice, I don't know who's going to win my first team or my second team. That's a heck of a way to start in every practice. You talk about getting bought in get some, and having a culture. That's how I feel about the stock market. His son, who's his assistant coach, and by the way, the store owner is the son of the original shopkeeper here in a second too. Parallels again, similar. His son said pressure is a privilege. And I feel the exact same thing about our stocks and making them compete against each other. The store owner, and I would say the title of this podcast, Jackson, you get to do all that heavy lifting on the tech side, should be the competition's special dividend in capitalism and what's repeatable in the system and why we built. And yes, we have fun comparing it to a bracket of stocks, but really the competition and making companies compete against each other is the exact same reason that the greatest sporting event is the, they used to be field of 64. I can't even say that now. <laughs> so the store owner and a tip of his cap to competition, the reason for his success, which we're going to share, led to a 105% dividend increase. He said, he goes to his team, his coaches, and said, how can we beat ourselves? That's what he looks back and gives his success to. So today, I'm going to share, and we're going to chop up, five things I've learned, the true special dividend of competition, and comparing this hoop coach to this store owner and this wild success that blew me away and surprised me to learn more. One, stay curious, never convinced. Two, our goal is to get half of our misses right. Well, that's going to take some explaining. Three, self-scout yourself. Four, how to get skin in the game and demand that of the people you may hire to do investing or be your coach. And five, how do we unlock surprising upside instead of swing for it and go for it and try to find it? How is it unlocked where we wouldn't even expect it? But brother, you're gonna have to put a shot clock on me today because I get excited about what we found and what I learned. And I, my goal today is to blow your mind a couple times. That's my goal. No, I love that. And uh, I got a quick story. My kids, who's five, basketball game. And, and as a big hoops fan, you're going to feel the pain of every kid watches Steph Curry and throws up a three all the time now. And my kid surprisingly made one and ran back, ran back to the bench. And I said, Hey, before we shoot another three, we got to get some rebounds and we got to get some layups. He said, you know, why? And I, I, after the game had to convince him, like, rather than just throwing up a Hail Mary three that probably won't go in when you're that young, let's just focus on these repeatable processes that put points on the board. And as we're talking March Madness and basketball stocks, yes, everything. I think just having this framework and, and the bullets there, which will be in the show notes for any, anybody listening, that's a good place to start. And that creates a foundation for navigating investing and financial planning that we can rely on all of the time. And that I don't want to... Um, forget to emphasize how important that can be. 
because a lot of people just feel like they're flying blind through this, looking at different people and managers and which fund and having a repeatable process. That's square one. So all these distractions that nobody, including ourselves, are immune from, it really is about building a repeatable system of your own or relying on if somebody has evidence-based track record that can do it with you and for you um, with skin in the game, hint, hint, we'll get to in a minute. For, for me, even, I've always done this. We, we've had Saturday stock tournaments since we started. There's a lot of reasons for that. I, I This is as much fun as it is work, but I like when the phones aren't ringing, the tickers are not moving, and we can measure and keep better score. So twice a month for as long as I've been doing this, 26 years now, we have Saturday stock tournaments where we whittle down thousands of tickers into only a few that we would consider owning. And again, the key is what we don't know. What is happening? This little store that I hope our kids, my, my daughter told me yesterday about her first big girl job, which brought another tear to my eye. I, I've told her I've never been more proud than hearing. And it is a challenging, challenging job. Um, this store that this kid that we're going to talk about whose stock just produced a 105% dividend increase, um, he was working as a teenager in an army surplus store and the owner wanted to get into the tackle business. He, he was noticing a shortage of supply in fishing gear. And he asked this kid who he knew was an expert. He, he, he knew fishing. He asked him what he thought. And old Dick decided to put together a list of the order and how he should build that out. And he handed it to the owner. And the owner crossed through more half of it and said, you are dumb. You have no idea what you're talking about, kid. So the parallel for all of us as investors is even sometimes you were smart enough to ask the question, which was really smart. He, he, he was convinced. He knew and he didn't listen to someone with ideas that might have worked, might not have. He had a roster of ideas and some of them are going to work. Um, that kid dejected left the store that day. I'm going to catch up with him here in a second. The pictures I'm going to share of this basketball coach, um, when he said, what did I mean a minute ago was our goals to get half our misses. He's focused on when things go wrong. He's not focused on himself and drawing up the best play. His practices at U of H, and my tip of the cap to Calvin Sampson, he puts a bubble on top of the basket so that every shot is a miss. And their entire culture and practice, and I mean, it is a war. They don't have games to who can score. They have games. Rebound is worth two points. And first to 10 in groups of three, the rest are running wins. And I've seen people diving on the floor, flying out of bounds for a rebound against each other. The bubble drill, as he calls it. I think of the same thing of stocks. Like, what could go wrong? There's so many things go right. There's all sorts of ways that shots can go in. Focusing on taking care of your misses and sell stops and knowing when to quit. So back to the store owner. See if I can pull this together here. So Dick walks out of that store, went to his grandma's house, on the heels of a depression, their, their family, this is 1948, had nothing, literally. And he said, I had this idea. And he said it was stupid, but I think it could work. And his grandma said, how much would it take to back you? She walked in to her cookie jar and dug together $300. Dick's bait and tackle shop, now known as Dick's Sporting Goods, was born. I love that so much. They just announced, well, I'll hang, hang on to that for a second. I think there's so many lessons here, but not 
putting your head down and being stuck in that job and respecting someone who was older who said they knew and he didn't know and remaining curious and trying sell stops lead to the opportunities. Too many investors are thinking about what to like and what to invest in, but they have no sell discipline or stop of knowing what to walk away from, which unlocks these opportunities. I think that's powerful and it's the exact opposite way that most people think about it. But I want to to emphasize how important that is because there will be compelling ideas and compelling opportunities. And when, when you look at the numbers and then things can change, right? The markets can shift, the economy can shift, and what happens can go from looking fantastic to not so great. And instead of going down with the ship or averaging down or, you know, the saying, buy when there's blood in the streets, how about you just look for another opportunity and you haven't, you know, lost your money. You've lived to invest another day. That to me is important and the way that we ought to be thinking about this. And it's truthfully the way, not the way that many people think about it. So a close cousin to that curiosity we've noticed is humility. And you see this in certain people around you. Um, And it's got to be relentless. It can't be occasionally. So that self-scouting, I think as a portfolio manager or a coach, it is really the hardest, but the most common theme amongst the most wildly successful that I've studied. So the adaptation to our stock tournament, when somebody asks, how did you know, or what did you think, or what do you like? Again, it's, it's what we don't know and what else might look good compared to our team. It's finding the weakest link in our own holdings what we thought we liked compared to this bench of endless opportunities. That's why we remeasure it every month, not falling in love with anything and relying on disciplines. So old Dick's son, Ed came in and took over the store. He didn't want to, by the way, he thought he wanted no part of the business. They had a, they had a rough, rough, long stretch together and for a lot of reasons, personalities included, the son wanted nothing to do with the business, came back and helped the health scare. And he noticed and he grew it. And it took 50 years to grow from that one store to 50 stores. Think about that relentless grind as an operator, father, son, that was it. Self-scouting, his son said, I saw what other big box retailers were doing. And I knew they were better. And I knew if they came into our town, they'd win. So he simply decided to build this business around one question. What could we build across the street from our store that would put us out of business? Think about that as an investor and approaching your own, not just holdings, your process, your plan, if you even have one, your advisor, asking him some hard questions or her, what could we build across the street that would put us out of the business? So we've talked about staying curious, never convinced. Goal is to get half of our misses, self-scouting. This next one's hard too. And it has been proven in the world of investing when Morningstar did this deep study of the most common theme amongst track records of active managers that outperform their peers in the market. One common theme, skin in the game. What managers owned their own portfolios, ideally at a disproportionate amount, skin in the game. As a business operator, it's no choice. Most of the most successful business owners you know have more than their skin in the game. Why don't we require the same of our investment managers? Good, simple question. So that old U of H Kooks son said about his dad, and I will never forget this quote. He's the master at humbling these dudes without belittling them. And how do you do that? And that's not easy. And I called my buddy, who's now a coach, 
who played at U of H long before Samson, I said, man, what's the craziest story you ever heard or saw at these practices that I got these films from that I want to share and we're going to put it up in the post of these dudes diving around and who in the world would sign up for diving for loose balls out of bounds in practice when nobody was looking. And then miraculously, for the first time ever this past year, they attracted their first ever five-star recruit and a lottery pick who signed up for this. I want to be coached harder. How do you in the how in the world do you get that kind of culture? So I asked my buddy and he said he started laughing. And he said, well, <laughs> there was this one time, everything was a competition. Everything was a competition. And you had to run if something was doing, done wrong. He said, but this one time, nobody could believe it because he made the coach do it. And it was not a young coach, former player, who would run through walls to get a shot on a staff like most of these teams. You'd see these timeouts now. There's like 15 coaches that come out. I can't even see the team anymore. <laughs> and who's in charge of like 20 different chairs? That's a little much. But when you got skin in the game and a culture inside, deep in that huddle, what's going on in the middle? He said, Ryan, this coach was an old dude. And when they said, are you serious? Is he really running? He looked over and all he was doing was putting time on the clock, which means it's on. You're running. <laughs> yeah. So Ed, son of Dick, to try to take and accelerate this store expansion and self-scout and do the only thing he knew, take advantage of how could I build the store across the street that would be better. He said... My real opportunity was I noticed all these other retailers were still really mom and pop operations. Their weakness was they had not developed diversely talented management teams with skin in the game. And I knew there was so many things I didn't know and would need people to guide me. So I wasn't afraid to say, I want to bring in a team. This is what he did as a store operator with explosive success, which I'm going to share in a couple seconds, but I would challenge anybody as an investor to consider doing this themselves, especially the ones that know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I love not knowing. We talked about that earlier. So Ed said, I want a team advisors around here. Build this circle of trust, which is my favorite part of this business for the folks that we serve. And Ed said, now running Dick stores. I want a team that says to me, you know what? And I quote this, you are full of shit. You don't know what you're doing. I want to have people who will call BS on me because if you start to believe in your own BS, you're the one with the problem, end quote. Mic drop. Skin in the game, humility, self-scout. How do we deal with misses? And so I'm going to unlock the surprising upside here and to finish strong and what surprised me and what I'm hoping is the biggest eyebrow raiser of you. As I tried to warn you, when you start to go to these youth sports tournaments, what you're getting into brother, and as a lifestyle choice, oh, and there's a lot of lunatics that are going to be surrounding you. And I have found, and I will give you a grin here in a second. Anybody who's listening to this, there is a way to profit from all those delusions. And it shocked me me to learn and an ability to pivot humbly in this story that digs i didn't even know this about the success and here i am a stakeholder for many years in this company that just gave 105 percent dividend raise i'm giving an example not to cherry pick it but because i didn't know this but our selection process and discipline removal of the weakest member on the team previously for it to join that's the repeatable system not what we think is going to happen or not a prediction so Number five, we promised what this discipline can unlock in some surprising upside that you didn't know. So those Cougars, when Samson showed up, were 13 and 19, and he's walking the dorm halls with a bullhorn and free pizzas, begging any student to come to one of those games. And now they're a one seat and attracting this lottery pick and hoping to be in the final four in Houston. I don't know if they'll make it or not, but Dick is going to be there. <laughs> they just cut a deal to license with 90 different NCAA sports, girls and boys teams. And by the way, when I showed my girl, my I have three daughters, I actually cried 
watching one of their videos about girl sports more than I get excited about watching boys basketball, as hard as that is to believe, but because what they're doing and more diverse and inclusivity and this father and son team now has the first outside the family CEO, who's a woman and tearing it up with new ideas. So if you're really good at business, I've thought kind of like this coach, um, you really shouldn't ever know what your next idea, and we're going to talk about one of Dick's new business lines here in a second, no different than a coach or a portfolio manager. Who, we have a roster of 50 teams, by the way. I don't know which one is going to be the next big surprise. And furthermore, I don't know which one is going to be the next weak link to be cut. And I'm willing to let math decide. It leaves no room for opinions, including our own. And we simply remeasure. And when this company, like many others, were brought to us because they were accelerating their growth and give you an example here in a second with the highest quality of a balance sheet and proof in a dividend you could hold in your hands to know what is real it was a candidate many years ago and then we get surprised with upside um they went from that one to 50 stores in 50 years and they doubled it four years later two years after that they went public with only 141 stores they've doubled that number a few more times And yet with such a long runway and I think wide with opportunities, they are now the best retailer in sporting goods. And yet they've only won 8% of that business, highly fragmented. A lot of mom and pops still to put out of business. And now they're delivering faster than Amazon is, believe me, when they were supposed to be put out of business. And instead of viewing online as the evil and ignoring it and digging in their heels because they know what they're doing is right, they wondered and asked from a little self-scouting and diving for loose balls in those boardrooms and pivoting in the opposite direction sometimes they noticed these kids and parents that were going out to these games with their equipment if they ever went to a little league game like you have recently they had to keep score and there was a little online app called game changer that did that better than any other and back then just keep score you have pitch count for little league which quickly adopted Game Changer as their go-to, and you had to load your data on there because they didn't want any of these kids throwing out their arms, so they had to load on Game Changer. They couldn't tell the parents, don't be on three other teams, that if you add up all their pitches, they still throw out their arms. Yes, these <laughs> sports parents, they are crazy. They are lunatics. And I would say I had a profit from it because I got excited about that Game Changer. Whatever happened? to that like the backstory where'd that start and this is the one of these rabbit holes that we tripped down after the fact because i didn't know dick's own game changer for a long time and i'm out there with little leaguers seeing laughing at some of these parents give me an update on that data and where they've taken that business and they pivoted during the pandemic of live streaming games which was fantastic and really a fascinating business lesson there in one month, a beautiful spring month in Texas or Idaho, where you said today it's warming up, sun shines out, it's 40 degrees. No matter what, these little leagues are going to crank yeah. up. And Game Changer, last year, 280 million hours were spent watching Game Changer. In one spring month, more games will be watched on Game Changer than in the entire history of Major League Baseball, all teams combined. That's crazy. So for many reasons, including unexpected surprises, 2022 was Dick's best year of sales ever. 75 years later, after that $300 backing from a cookie jar, now, with the recent dividend increase, that $300 cookie jar is resulting in all stakeholders receiving $332 million in dividends alone this next year on a business that's now worth $12 billion. By staying curious, getting our misses, self-scouting with skin in the game, and not knowing where the unexpected upside will come from. 
I do love tripping down some of these rabbit holes and learning a little bit of history. I like sharing it in case it brings some reasons behind some of these raisins, reasons behind some of these raises. But it all came from the math and the objective process of willing to say, I don't know, and I want to learn more. And if I can say that 26 years later, after starting as an active equity manager, I would humbly submit that anybody could benefit from that mindset. And we're happy to help and share, as you said, and I'm grateful to you a couple years ago, why don't we just share every once in a while, 30 minute conversation of what we're talking about and looking at and learning ourselves every week in case somebody else might be interested. I love it. I've learned a ton doing this podcast. I I mean, that's the power of this. And this is the exact message that we wanted to convey from day one of starting the podcast, just this optimism and this excitement. So if anybody would like to schedule a meeting with our team, you can email us team at freedomdaysolutions.com. As always, we appreciate any sort of like, comment or subscription. And obviously, if you share it with your friends and your family. And with that incredible, powerful, incredibly powerful story, some of that math behind that's pretty powerful too. With that, we will see everybody next week. This show is brought to you by Freedom Day Solutions, LLC, a registered investment advisory firm advising individuals and families nationwide. Performance is not guaranteed and past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. To learn more, visit freedomdaysolutions.com. This show contains general information that is not suitable for everyone and was shared for informational purposes only. Any forward-looking statement or opinion expressed is subject to change without notice. Nothing contained herein constitutes investment, legal, tax, or other advice, nor is it to be relied on in making investment or other decisions. Clients of Freedom Day Solutions may hold positions in the securities discussed.